Hi again. This episode wraps up our first session with Michaela, the first of many sessions. We are processing what we've just shared together and attempting to formulate an adaptable plan for how our discussion will go from here. The work of making change by appealing to the good within each other is at the front of what we say and share. And Michaela shares her strong desire for us to land on some strategies for change that are concrete, while Patty urges broadening the definition and methods used in activist work. Jerry reminds us that a strategy is not its tactics. Listen along, and then please share with us, what goodness do you see around you? What goodness can you see within you? Here it is. I, uh, I guess the final thing that I wanted us to do today before we, before we wrap it up is to sort of make our plan. Because this isn't just a one-day thing. I mean, unless you, at the end of this, are like, you know what, I don't actually want to do it. No, no. Um, <laughs> he wants to do it. Yeah, you can't pump me up like this and then send me away. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. I just, I just always you want you to know that... me up to let me know. <laughs> this is entirely by consent, is my point. Uh-huh. Okay. And so, so um, I, I would find it important to sort of sit for a minute maybe with what we've all talked about for the last couple of hours and uh, decide what the next few weeks should look like. Mm-hmm. If you have come to any sense, Michaela, about uh, the, the passions that drive you, the, the people that you have your focus on, or what it is that is going to rise to the top here, so is she saying is if you were steering the boat, where would you take it? Oh, mm. that's a great way to say it. Yeah. Sure. Mm. And you are steering the boat. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? <laughs> <clears throat> we're a good we're well, a good crew. What do you want to investigate? <laughs> well the the um the thing that, that I'm most interested in exploring more with you too is something that both of you mentioned in different language. You talked about uh you know, I don't wanna make a better world just for my kids but for everyone's kids Mm -hmm. and I can't remember how you spoke to it but it's the same thing about moving from the individual and the and the small-scale interpersonal to the collective transformation of things so that that we're, we're working on behalf of everyone right how do we enact that in a way that um, brings the spiritual and the political into more of an interwoven effort. It's I've been part of spiritual communities, one in particular, where there was hardly any interest in social change. And I'm still... The, the activist groups that I'm in Ugh. still are dominated by people who don't want to go to the personal, to the relational. They just want to do the, the collective action, the political. And I know that the two of you are not satisfied with that, yeah. and neither am I. So that's mm-hmm. what I want to explore more. So the one thing that that I know, and I think I mentioned just a little bit ago, your concern that in some ways we can't build the kind of movement we need from a white male perspective, that we need other voices, particularly indigenous voices, to guide us and to understand why that's necessary. So maybe one of the things is how we could introduce that more actively into Mm -hmm. our activist community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's one thought that I have about what I know you're passionate about that I think addresses that. So maybe this this is the segment where we deal with the need for non-white voices in this movement, you know, with indigenous voices, or maybe not. I'm just... 
But to me, in some ways, that's unnatural. I don't think you can come from an indigenous perspective without connecting the spiritual and the political. Right. So I don't know where that fits in the mix. But well, the way I, the way I would say that is, it's not so much how can we bring non-white voices into the climate yes, change exactly. movement. R- rather, how do we as white people? Brilliant center the leadership and and oh, yeah. position ourselves to learn from oh, indigenous yeah. and other people Absolutely. of color. So let's make that happen because C- of your passion for it. But I think it's, it's a very shared passion. Though it gets submerged in one of the, the, I hate the phrase, the fierce urgency of now, the fierce urgency of acting directly in opposition to what's going on with the planet Mm. all true but what we're i think pressing for is a deeper um you know in the 70s and 80s joanna macy you know her work deep ecology which in my mind was feminism welded to this political perspective and they're still they're still going Mm -hmm. i mean joanna's 94 now she's still out there, and Barbara Ford is a good ally of hers. Yeah. So Barbara Ford might be somebody we might want to talk to. You bet. I noted that the first time you mentioned her and and, uh, said to myself, I need to connect with her again. Yep. So I think think Barbara Ford, I mean, she's so delightful. and, And, you know, I love her because, for lots of reasons, but she's, it's not like she's, but she doesn't puff herself up. I mean, she's done extraordinary stuff for a very long time. But she's, she, every time we're together, she introduces me as, here's Jerry, he knows everybody. Oh, give me a break. I know six mm-hmm. fucking people. <laughs> I was at Jane Fonda's wedding. That's true. All in years, all in years of buddy. That's true. You know everybody. And you've worked with them. I'm a pretender. I'm a, you know, wannabe. I mean, good God, Barbara, stop it. <laughs> but it does create a lovely bond. I also feel she is one of the people who makes it possible for me to continue. Mm. Patty is certainly Bill and Susan, Barbara, you. It's Make almost it. like we're a network of humans that support and love each other and help each other move forward. Hmm. Kind of mm. like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Imagine that. Well, so what I'm hearing is the general sense is shifting from the transactional style of activism to a transformational style that's done through a very personal and relational um, methodology built on our own understanding of the connection of the spiritual to all of it first. Yes. Did I catch it? Well, I would add that um, I don't want to leave the transactional out of it. I mean, okay. that's the part about challenging those in power to do the right thing. That's transactional to me. And so I want to weave that with the transformational. And I've been working on that for decades oh, that's and beautiful. don't feel like I have figured it out. We're going to figure it out. Okay. We're going to figure it out. We might not get to the final point. Yeah, right. But I think what, what we're discovering is this is a fertile field for taking ideas and emotions and the harsh urgency of now and bringing them together. I think we've been digging deep here in this mm. couple mm. of hours mm. in ways that I don't know where else would this conversation happen. I don't know. It has to be really intentional. Yeah. So I'm going to pat us on the back. Good back. Yeah. Good hey, back. good job. We did us. good. But I'm so excited about the three of us being together in this. I'm so excited about it. And I feel like we bring very different sets of experiences to this moment, which makes us a great resource. I just, I'm coming off COVID and coming off just being really drained and I'm, I'm all pumped up and I'll probably fall over when you leave the room and go <laughs> crash. But... <laughs> I believe what we're doing matters. I believe it's important. I believe it's been neglected. 
And we're just going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just summed it up brilliantly. You of, I don't have a voice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can be snarky, you know. Please do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay I, I'm snarky gonna... in a complimentary way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Snarky is almost positive a snark. Good thing. I mean, that is a contradiction. But... Yeah. So that's sort of my sort of end statement for this session. Is that's that's what I'm feeling as a ba- as a result of what we've begun today. We've only begun in such a brilliant, in my mind, brilliant way. I, I find that to try to give a a title or a succinct definition to what we're doing here still seems very amorphous. It still seems like a word cloud Uh to me. But if we, what do you think, Michaela? Because you mentioned a lot of things, the personal, the the relational, the idea that we as white people need to be learning, not directing, and (laughs) uh, bringing in the spiritual and understanding that that doesn't have to be an anathema to the political, uh, if that could be broken down, where to start and where to end up? Is there any direction that you feel you could give to that? Well, the first thought is that we start with a vision, that we each share our vision of the world we're working for. I love it. And... um, and from there, something about um, the paths and the challenges in the way of getting there. So it's, um, I would like it to be at least in part strategic at that point, which is huh. not my strong suit. Huh. Uh, You'd like us to speak strategically about how we actually do this? Yeah, how do we okay. work toward the vision that we want to create? That feels good. You know, I've tried a lot of different ways over the decades, and, and none of them have gotten me where I want to go yet. But we need non-white voices in this mix as well. So Agreed. where are we going to find those? Do you feel like you have connections that you could tap? Not at this point. I've lost them over the... See, uh, here's I mean, the struggles uh, as a uh, as a result of of painful and and uh, trust undermining experiences with people of color, particularly here in Portland. I've I've lost most of it, not all of them, but most of them. And my analysis of of the current situation is that BIPOC, the vast majority of them don't want to be dealing with white people. They want to be developing their own visions and strategies and modes of political work. And they're doing that. They don't need us, and they know they don't need us. But they do, because we have... Ultimately, they do. Yeah, right. In other words, nationalism is, is a stage. But you, don't, you don't have the luxury of living that way if you want to win, Right. So you're right. There's a there's a, there are stages in which it's really inappropriate for people of color to be talking to white people, and there are stages where, if we want to win, it has to happen. Right. So that's part of why what I meant by uh, <clears throat> first the vision and then talking about the paths and in particular the challenges of getting there. I have in the last several years in particular uh, um, what do I want to say I've had experiences with people of color that have undermined the possibility of trust when the, uh, when the initial possibilities seemed quite grand I mean the possibility of the BIPOC folks trusting us mm-hmm. yeah well uh, I don't have, I mean, I don't have any connections to anything because I've been in exile in a certain way for a long time. But when, so Khan, it was a really good friend of mine, Khan Pham, we hold our hearts in awe of her. Um, When I was at, the first thing I did ever going out in the last eight years was to a fundraiser for for Khan and Joanne Hardesty. Uh, And there was a Klickitat 
young woman, mid twenties, who was connected. The Portland Clean Energy Fund, the organizing around that created a community of activists mm -hmm. who are extraordinary. Yeah. So this is a young woman who definitely is engaging herself in the climate struggle in the larger Portland community, which is predominantly white. I'm uh, part of a degrowth study group uh, that has some people in it that were have been part of PSEF, and I could check with them to see if they could lead us to some people of color who yeah. were also part of that that might be you willing know, to talk I, with And I, I certainly respect that phase. You know, and again, it's just unfortunate that you can't win without white people. I mean, it would be lovely if you could build an alternative power great enough to deal with this basically revolutionary attempt to reshape society, but I think we're, we're going to be key in that struggle. So, uh, philosophically, I understand completely. Politically, I also understand completely what's, what we will eventually need if we're going to win. So. We have a great opportunity to beseech other white people to look to BIPOC folks yeah, as right. their leaders. Right. So that was if we got to do this. Yeah. So there was a woman I met in the park. Could probably go find her again. I think I have her card. But she runs things that support BIPOC folks. She's indigenous. She, well, so I, we had just started planning this podcast when I met her in the park. Um, she was running a table out there on Friday. And, uh, but we talked a little bit and it was, it was very much like take an amalgamation of what we all just said today. And it was very much, we had this interchange about caring for all the children <laughs> because they make up the world that white children right. live in. Right. And, um, and I had this moment of just like a little desperation that I allowed to show in front of her of like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Right. Like I see it. I want it to be fixed, but what do I do? Hmm. And she said, totally rightly, talk to white people. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'll talk to white people. That's what I'm going to do right here, yeah. right now, on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, friend. You think this is where most of our listeners will be white? Well, yeah. I don't know. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe before inviting any BIPOC people into this conversation, we invite some other white people that we would like okay, to I think that's great. help develop along with I ourselves. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. So what I, what I heard you say was that we're going to establish a vision or our, each of our visions mm -hmm. to elucidate that out right what what we have envisioned and, and why like get to the emotional heart of that i think probably um and then move into paths we see forward laying out the challenges that we see the barriers toward these visions that we right. have um and then let that lead us to a real strategy mm -hmm. Something yeah, I think that that's, I would say probably needs to incorporate this woman, this woman, this woman this right is here. What, this is what Michaela just said. I'm <laughs> oh, just yeah, repeating back what Michaela said. Break. But I think that our strategy should heavily do things that activists haven't really done. Mm. I think we need to look God, at how so marketing <clears throat> brings people in. Mm. Right, because we have a product that we want people to buy. Wow, wow. But our product is love, <laughs> and the cost is free, friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's a it's a hell of a keep, deal. Keep that one. Keep that. <laughs> that's in the that's in the promo. That's in the promo. Okay. We'll find that as we go down the It'll road. It'll be a I summing know. up yeah, and a strategic yeah, summing I, up. I don't think we it's know exactly be an where all this process. is going to go. You know, and I really, in a sense, stand corrected in, in that sense that we need to bring indigenous voices in, which I believe we do and I believe we can. I think we laid out a path yes. that goes from where we are to where we need to go with this conversation. We don't know what that last piece looks like, mm. but we know it's strategic summing up of this conversation, and it's going to be brilliant. I think if we can make any contribution to understanding the role of uh, oh, our role in relationship to BIPOC leadership, if we know, we got to figure it out. I mean, for them and for us, as we, you know. So 
Will we do that? Probably not. Will we make some progress compared to what's going on? Hell yes. Just saying it makes me cough. <laughs> <coughs> bah. I feel so much better now. What is it, the butterfly effect? The idea that, you know, one right. little thing you might do, you just never know where it'll go. And yeah. so we have to trust in a way because right. we probably realize we won't necessarily see the world become all that we dreamed it could be. But, you know, maybe in 50 years, 100 years, and we don't have to reap the benefits of it, and we don't even have to know that it got better. Have you seen the film The Year of Living Dangerously? A long time ago. Sigourney Weaver, yeah, it's an amazing film, but Linda Hunt's role in it is this sort of gender flexible, brilliant mind. And at one point, she's trying to train Mel Gibson, which appears to have been impossible, but um, she says, We add our light to the sum of light. And that's carried me through a lot. Mm. It's mm. like, I don't know what I'm doing. Paul Goodman has this very short poem, Sewing with an O, ignorant of the method, maybe it'll grow anyway. Right? So I'm definitely also, that also guides me. It's like, I have to keep planting seeds, I have to keep watering the plants. I don't know what's going to grow out of it, but I know if we don't nurture it, it's not going to grow. So I think speaking the truth to goodness is followed by nurturing all life around us in every form. Well, right. I think it can be so hard to think that we're making any kind of difference. Mm. So it's important to remember that yeah. if we put more good into the world, yep. mathematically speaking, yeah. the world is now more good. Yeah. Every the scientist. I think another thing we need to uh, fit into our um, plan for this project is uh, some time frames for the visions that we spin. Mm, um, that's good. You know, are we talking about what we envision in the next 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? And it could be different for each one of us, but I think we need to define that. I've got a 500 year plan, so. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> I figure we'll either all blow ourselves up or we'll have it figured out by then, actually. Uh, that's okay. My, that's my sense. All right. <laughs> Evolution takes a long time. <laughs> yes, I know. Isn't it unfortunate we don't get to see it all? I have gratitude for both of you, obviously, and for this opportunity for us to make a difference. It feels like a, a, like a gift we're, we're trying to give. And, mm -hmm. um, that's the motion of speaking the truth to goodness is followed by basically giving ourselves away. Yeah. Onward. Well, thank you, Jerry, and thank you, Michaela. Oh, thank you for inviting me into this. Yay! We did it! <laughs> it's good, really rich. Okay, don't say any more amazing shit, because I'm about to stop the recording. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with episodes from our second session together with Jerry, Michaela, and Patty. That's me. If these stories and ideas connect for you, please consider reaching out. We hope to feature listener stories in future episodes. Feel free to leave comments on Spotify or find us on Instagram. And don't forget to share this podcast with your friends. I'm Patty Robron, and my co-hosts have been Michaela McCormick and Jerry Atkin. Until next time, keep speaking truth to goodness, because goodness is all around. <laughs> <laughs>